We have all seen sci-fi movies showcasing travel to Mars and sometimes even colonization of Mars. But in reality, if we want to make Mars habitable without constant life support, we have to embark on a long and extremely difficult journey of terraforming Mars. And one of Elon Musk's radical ideas to accelerate this process is by literally nuking Mars into Earth. So how in the world did we get to such a proposal and would it actually work? Well, starting off, when we're looking at terraforming a celestial body, it would be really helpful if the original planet is already somewhat similar to the Earth. Fortunately for us, Mars is relatively similar to the Earth, and it's right next to us as well. But this doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy to terraform Mars. Sure, it seems like Mars may have some polar ice caps, it has similar elements and compounds in its atmosphere like oxygen and CO2, and most importantly, we can actually stand on it unlike the gas giants. Some other nice similarities include its rotation rate and its actual tilt. A day on Mars, or a Sol, is only 24 hours and 37 minutes, so just slightly longer than the Earth. And Mars' tilt of 24 degrees is very similar to Earth's 23.5 degrees, meaning that they see relatively similar seasonal shifts. Despite these favorable features, there are some large hindrances. For instance, Mars' atmosphere is less than 1% as thick as Earth's atmosphere, and only 0.2% of their already very thin atmosphere is oxygen, while 95.3% is carbon dioxide. Aside from this, though the temperature on Mars is suitable in certain areas where we have found temperatures as high as 75 degrees Fahrenheit, the average surface temperature on Mars is actually negative 81 degrees Fahrenheit, and temperatures can drop below negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, the gravitational pull on Mars is only one third of Earth's gravitational pull. But we can't really do much about that right now. Aside from that, we would have to heat up Mars and change its atmosphere composition to support more oxygen and nitrogen. Luckily, scientists predict that at one point in Earth's history, its atmosphere was also mostly CO2. As a result, we just had to figure out how to replicate what naturally took place on Earth. Considering this, let's start off by taking a look at the less radical ideas before we dive into nuking Mars. The first idea is to take advantage of extremely large orbital mirrors, and is pretty straightforward. Basically, the idea suggests that we should construct mirrors that are hundreds of miles wide and launch them to Mars. Of course, this would be a logistical nightmare, but theoretically, it might be possible to construct and launch such mirrors from space. NASA is currently developing their solar sail, which may be useful if we decide to go through with this plan. Anyways, these 200,000 ton mirrors would be placed a few hundred thousand miles from the Martian surface, and be used to reflect solar radiation and energy onto the Martian surface. We could place these mirrors at random places, and they would theoretically be effective at raising the Martian surface temperature by a few degrees at the selected location. But the real application for this idea would be in conjunction with Mars's polar caps. We would place several of these gigantic mirrors near Mars and concentrate their reflections onto Mars's polar caps. Slowly, this would not only melt the ice, but also release CO2 trapped within the ice. As temperatures start to rise within the polar caps of Mars, this would lead to the release of various greenhouse gases from the Martian surface. And as we all know, greenhouse gases lead to global warming. Ironically, Mars's terraforming plans generally propose various ways to artificially introduce global warming to Mars. With that being said, the second plan is to straight up just pollute the Martian atmosphere. Constructing and moving 100 mile long mirrors would be insanely hard. So if we're going to commit to moving so many materials to Mars, why not just build solar powered greenhouse producing factories on Mars? These factories would release greenhouse gases into the Martian atmosphere to thicken it up and heat it up. And they would also convert CO2 into oxygen for humans to eventually breathe. We have inadvertently been very good at doing this on Earth. So we could just transition that success, or I guess lack of success to Mars where it would actually be helpful. After many, many years, it is expected that though this won't completely eliminate the need for breathing devices, it will eliminate the need for pressurized suits. Moving on, 
we have an idea that rivals the craziness of nuking Mars, which is launching asteroids at Mars. Though the premise is no doubt quite insane, this is actually much easier to accomplish than the last two plans. We wouldn't have to transport millions of pounds of supplies or construct large factories and mirrors. Rather, we just have to strap some super powerful rocket engines onto a poor asteroid just taking a stroll in the void of space and send it on a suicide mission into Mars. I mean, it seems pretty simple in theory, but the weight of what we would be doing is quite heavy, both literally and figuratively. Anyways, the plan entails using nuclear thermal rocket engines that would move the given 10 billion ton asteroid at 4 kilometers per second towards Mars. This would actually take about a decade to do, but eventually it will be released onto the Martian surface. The impact will be so powerful that it is expected to release 130 million megawatts of power. That's the same as 130 trillion watts of power, which is enough to run the entirety of everything we do on Earth for a full 10 years. The impact will lead to a rise in temperature of 3 degrees Celsius throughout the entire planet of Mars, which would lead to a trillion tons of water being melted. Evidently, given the incomprehensible amount of energy released by each of these asteroids, we would just need two handfuls of these to cover 25% of the Martian surface with water and heat the atmosphere to a livable level. We may be able to accomplish all of this within just 50 years after starting. However, the largest drawback of this plan is that the asteroid impacts would leave Mars inhabitable for centuries. Though all of these plans may be theoretically possible, NASA has confirmed that with today's technology, none of these ideas are plausible today. This is likely to naturally change within the next few hundred years as we continue to advance. Or instead, we could implement an even crazier idea that could further accelerate the timeline. And that leads us into Elon's plan of nuking Mars. Elon Musk has been teasing this idea since 2015, and by his recent tweets, it seems like he is still relatively serious about it. Considering the asteroid idea, this actually makes sense. The only difference is that the energy release would originate from a nuclear bomb as opposed to an asteroid impacting the Martian surface. However, as this is a nuclear bomb instead of an asteroid, we would have more control over when it explodes. In other words, we don't have to wait until the nuclear weapon hits the surface before detonating it. Elon Musk describes that this consists of a continuous stream of very low fallout nuclear fusion explosions. This way, we won't disturb the Martian surface like the asteroids would, and we would be able to essentially create artificial suns within Mars. These nuclear bombs would be targeted above Mars' polar caps, which would of course lead them to melt and heat up the planet. And Musk claims that this is not risky and that it would not make Mars radioactive. Considering all of this, nuking Mars actually seemed like the most feasible solution with the technology that we currently have. However, one serious criticism of the plan is that it would take a mind-boggling amount of nuclear explosions. According to the executive director of Roscosmos, which is the Russian National Space Agency, Musk's plan would require a minimum of 10,000 nuclear warheads. To put that in perspective, we have a total of 14,000 nuclear weapons today, but we did have 70,000 in 1986. So we are capable of creating 10,000 nuclear warheads. However, that would be quite an endeavor. When this concern was raised to Elon Musk, he simply responded by saying, no problem. I guess that he just sees producing nuclear warheads as the simplest part of terraforming Mars. Anyways, at the end of the day, whether mirrors, factories, asteroids, or nukes, the key to terraforming Mars is figuring out the most effective way to transform mass into thermal energy. This way, we can heat up Mars and eventually establish permanent bases on Mars without constant life support. Currently, Elon Musk thinks that nuclear weapons are the answer to this conundrum. But even if his idea does come to fruition, scientists expect that fully terraforming Mars will take a minimum of a couple thousand years, if not tens of thousands of years. So that's way past our lifetimes anyways. However, if we get the ball rolling within our lifetimes, I'm sure we can make a respectable contribution to the overall effort. Do you guys think nuking Mars is the right way to go? Comment that down below. 
Also, if you guys think this video explained the prominent ideas for terraforming more as well, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.